All right, my friends, let's open up your Bibles right now to uh, Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Okay. And really, this is about walking with the Lord. This is about recognizing the Lord. This is about having that intimate relationship with the Lord where you, you know each other so well. And um, but a lot of times we don't recognize that the Lord is right there. We don't recognize that he's He's with us. You know, we're, we're going about our busy day. We're going about doing what we need to do. You have be here and here. And um, we don't recognize that Jesus, he's right there. He's right there with us. And he's talking to us. He's walking with us. And this is what happened on the road to Emmaus in Luke chapter 24. That Jesus was right next to, him, to them and they didn't recognize him. And the Lord showed me something new. That it wasn't until he broke bread with them. That he sat down to eat with them. To sup with them. To break bread with them. That they recognized him. And um, I'm going to read from this chapter. And I want to give a word to all of you. For your households. For your families. For your relationships. And it's all about the breaking of the bread, breaking bread together. And um, it was interesting because as I read from Luke 24, you know, um, my daughter and I are, she went prodigal, but the Lord is bringing her back. And now she's going to be 21 years old and the Lord is healing our relationship. And she's slowly but surely coming back to Jesus. And, um, I want to have more rich experiences with her. I want to really shine Jesus Christ to her. And I ask the Lord every day, how can I shine you to her? How can I show her who you really are, Jesus? So uh, she needed to go get some things for her new apartment. So we went to Big Lots and, you know, she got some things for storage and baskets and things like that. We had a, a good time doing that. And, um, it was Saturday. And I said, uh, do you want to stop and get something to eat? She's like, no, you know, just run through Taco Bell. And I'm like, no, no. I go, let's sit down. Let's sit down. So I was really led by the Lord. She's like, are you sure, mom? You know, you, you already spent some money on me today. And she's being really respectful of that. And, you know, I'm so proud of her. And um, I said, it's fine, Landry. You know, it's all from the Lord. And when you do get a chance to buy something for your kids, uh, you know, just say, this is from the Lord. This isn't from me. You know, God is our provider. And I just keep slowly, you know, just planting those little seeds. So there's this restaurant in Virginia Beach. And they've opened up a couple of lo locations. And uh, it's, it's, it's her favorite, favorite restaurant. And it's called Baker's Crust, Baker's Crust. And it's interesting because there's a Baker Road that runs right through Virginia Beach and her new apartment is right off this Baker Road. And I kept seeing the word Baker, Baker, Baker. And uh, I thought, oh, is it because of my high school? You know, I sought the Lord. If he's showing you a word over and over again, if he's showing you something over and over again, just say, Lord, you know, why are you showing me that word over and over again? You know, I know I went to Baker High School in Ballinsville, New York. Are you showing me something about my high school? And so, um, <clears throat> He wasn't really showing me baker. He was showing me bread. He was showing me bread. He was showing me bread. And so um, I said to Landry, I said, hey, I said, they just opened another Baker's Crust location in Lanstown on the way back to your place. Do you want, I know it's your favorite restaurant. Do you want to stop and get something to eat? She was like, okay, sure. If you want to sit down, she's like, I'll sit down. So we go into Baker's Crest and we get this really intimate table. You know, usually I'm like, oh, can I have a booth? It's more comfortable for my back. But we got just this little small table, just the two of us. And the Lord was speaking intimacy. He was speaking connection. He was speaking intimacy. And, and I, before I had prayed that day, I said, King Jesus, I invite you to come and be with me and my daughter today. Listen. Before you know you're going to spend time with your husband that day, before you know that you're going to spend time with your children that day or someone, just invite King Jesus ahead of time. Just say, King Jesus, I invite you to be with us today, to come and just be with us today. Just 
be be with us, be in the midst of us in Jesus' name. So I always do that. I invite the Holy Spirit. And I do that even when I'm talking to you all. I say, King Jesus, I invite you to be uh, with my peeps and I today as, as we're, we're intimately spending time together and that you're here spending time with us intimately. And it's it's a bre- it's a breaking of the bread. So we get into Baker's Crust and she's kind of being quiet. She's not really giving me eye contact. And she's kind of being really quiet. And I said, oh, do you want to order an appetizer? And she's like, oh, yeah. And so she looks and she's like, oh, look, there's the bruschetta, which we both love bruschetta. And she's like, hey, mom, look, it's it, they put the bruschetta on sourdough bread. She, she gets excited about bread. So do I. <laughs> uh, we're both a little gluten intolerant. So I've been praying over that. And I'm getting better. She's getting better. But sourdough bread seems to be a little easier on both of us. So plus there. So we order the bruschetta and she's still kind of quiet. The bruschetta comes to the table and there's two pieces for her and two pieces for me. And we're like taking the bread and eating the bread together. Right. And I just quickly prayed over the food and blessed it. And as we're eating this bread, she starts to open up to me and she starts talking to me about things that she hadn't talked about in a while, the things that are in her heart. And I was just listening. I was just listening. And I was just saying, Lord Jesus, speak through my mouth. Holy Spirit, speak through my mouth. Just giving her encouragement. We were breaking of the bread. We were having of the bread together. And so we had a lovely lunch. And I brought her back to her place and, um, you know, just gave her a big hug and a kiss. And, uh, and as, as, as I was driving home, the Lord said to me, row to Emmaus, the baker is me. I am the baker. Father God is the baker of the bread. Jesus is the bread. Our relationship with Jesus Christ and everyone else is the breaking of the bread. The intimacy. Listen to me. This is the word. And we're going to go right into Luke 24. Okay. Listen to me. Father God is the baker. He is the baker of the bread. King Jesus is the bread. When we meet in the name of Jesus and we invite Jesus Christ and we break bread together. Signs, wonders, miracles, intimacy, relationship, openness. We recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Listen to the word of the Lord. We recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. We recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. When we break bread in his name, he is there. And his his spirit begins to flow. He's at your, your table. You see, as I read Luke chapter 24, they did not recognize Jesus. They were talking to him. For uh, uh, hours, walking down the road, they did not recognize who he was until they sat down and broke bread with him. What does that mean? We need to invite Jesus to our table. We need to invite Jesus to our meetups. We need to invite Jesus, right? He says, I stand at the door and knock. Open up the door and let me in so I can what? Sup with you. Sup. It's all about us having that intimacy recognizing Jesus through the breaking of the bread, Luke 24. So my friends, here's the word for you today. Invite your loved ones to break bread with you and Jesus. And I don't care if you haven't talked to them in months, invite them to break bread with you. Invite them to come and eat. Invite them out to dinner where you can have bread, a place A place where there's bread. Jesus was born in the house of bread. Bethlehem means house of bread. He is the bread. He is the bread of life. God is the baker. He is the bread. When we meet in his name and break bread together, we what? Recognize Jesus. Jesus is recognized in the middle of it. I'm going to speak that to you again. 
God is the baker of the bread. Jesus is the bread. He is the bread of life, right? When we break bread with others and we invite Jesus in to that bread breaking, Jesus is recognized in the middle of it. I don't care how prodigal that person is that you're meeting. I don't care how far away from God they are. When you invite Jesus to your breaking of the bread, Jesus is recognized in the middle of it. Now, let's go to this word right now. We're going to jump right in here with Luke 24. Hear the word of the Lord. Luke 24. Today is Monday, April 24th. This is a powerful, powerful, powerful word. And this is the revelation of the Holy Spirit that God gave for me. King Jesus gave this to me for all of you and myself. Luke 24. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices that they prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They stood there puzzled. Two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. The men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? My friends, we got to start looking, am looking among life. Jesus is alive, right? He is risen. We have to focus on our risen Lord. We got to focus on life. We can't focus on dead, dark things anymore. We can't focus on dead, dark things anymore. We can't focus on, uh, you know, grief. We can't focus on those things that are dead. We can't focus on our past, right? Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He's alive. He's alive, he's alive, and we're forgiven. Heaven's gates are open wide. So because Jesus rose from the dead, everything has been made new and alive. Resurrection power. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remember. You hear when you hear the word of the Lord, you are brought into remembrance of the words of Jesus Christ. Wow, I remember Jesus said this to me. You see, listen to me. When you put your focus on life, when you put, put your focus on the power of the risen Lord, he will bring you remembrance of the good words he's given to you. Come on. Be like, wait a minute. This is what he told me. This is what the Lord told me. I'm going to get out of my funk. I'm going to get out of my grief. I'm going to get out of wallowing in my sorrows. And I'm going to remember what the Lord told me. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. So there was a great gathering. Right? After Jesus passed away. Oh, away after he died on the cross and he they put him in the tomb they went and what they gathered they were gathered but what were they gathered in they were gathered in their grief they were gathered in the grief and i love that it was the women that went forward right to go to the tomb and they saw the angels of the lord and they got that message and they rushed back. You see, we got to rush to tell the good news. We cannot, we cannot wait, right? We got to be excited. We got to be excited to tell the good news. They told his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and the mother, Mary, the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. So there were many, many female women followers of Jesus Christ that witness to the resurrection of Jesus. And they were the one that came and told the men. So my friends, women, you are glory carriers. You carry the good news. Behold the beautiful feet that bring the good news, right? I'm telling you moms, 
grandmas, wives, mothers, get the good news in your mouth. Get the good reports in your mouth. Stop wallowing in the negativity. Mom. But the story sounded like nonsense to men, so they didn't believe it. <laughs> How many times have you said to your husband, and say, look, just have faith. It's true. The Lord told me this. Come on, just have faith. Sometimes men are, hey, show me. I'm from Missouri. Okay. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. So you want your husbands to be like Simon Peter. That the minute you tell them, that the minute you witness to them, they were like, okay, let's go look. Let's go look. So you just speak that. Like, we take the word. The word is alive. Take Luke 24. Speak it over your brothers and your sisters and your children and your husband and your fathers and your loved ones and say, my husband is like Simon Peter. And Luke 24, when I tell him something that glorious that the Lord has done, when I tell him good news, he jumps up and he says, yeah, let's check this out. He ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw empty linen and wrappings. And he went home again, wondering what happened, right? He's going to ponder this. Your husbands are going to ponder this, right? They're going to start wondering, wow. Look at the faith of my wife. Look at the faith of my mom. Look at the faith of my sisters. Look at their faith. Right? So no matter what, my friends, if if the, the man in your life doesn't have as much faith as you, it's okay. Tell him anyway. Let the Lord do the rest of the work. Now, while Peter is pondering, while Peter and the disciples are pondering, the women had already shared the good news with the disciples and the rest of that group that was with them. And they're pondering this, right? It's starting to soak into them and marinate into them, okay? Come on. We still share. Even if someone is not going to receive it, we still share we still sow that seed and we ask the Lord to take it from there, right? We don't beat them over the head with it. We just say, this is what I saw. This is what I heard by faith. I'm sharing with you. I am just believing that you are going to see it too. And just let the Holy Spirit work on them. Okay. Now, while this is all marinating in Peter and the disciples, Jesus was walking down the road. And this is the risen Lord. He had just rose out of the tomb and he's going for a walk. He's going for a walk. He wanted to encounter two of his followers. Okay, so here we are. Luke 24, it's the 24th of April. We're in Luke chapter 24, the New Living Translation. Now, here we go. Road to Emmaus, my friends. We all want this. That same day, Jesus is working, right? He's marinating in people. The bread is rising, okay? So Peter, God is the baker. God is the baker. Jesus is the bread. The word is the is is the, is the is the baking of the bread, the marinating of the bread, the kneading of the bread, the rising of the bread. So right, that bread of life was spoken into Peter and the disciples from the women, right, who knead the bread, who bake the bread. And what happened? Now this bread is rising in Peter and rising in the disciples. A lot of times. Three hours it takes for your bread to rise. Who, who, who bakes homemade bread? And if you bake homemade bread, I like to make homemade bread. I like to make pizza dough homemade, you know, and you, you put everything together in the bread, to, you know, all the ingredients, and then 
You give it three hours to rise. Three hours to rise. Okay? Sourdough bread takes a little longer. That's what my daughter and I ate. We ate the sourdough bread and the breaking of the bread. But it takes about three hours. So what's happening in Peter right now? Simon Peter. The women had brought this news that the bread of life had risen. He was alive. Now, Peter is, it's working in him. It's working in him. It's working in the other disciples. It's, 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 it's rising. It's getting ready to come to, fru to full fruition. Okay. Now listen to this. Meantime, the risen Lord, King Jesus, he's walking down the road on the way to Emmaus. Did you know there's an Emmaus, Pennsylvania? We've been doing a lot of prayer in Pennsylvania. Jesus is going to make himself known in Pennsylvania. Anyway, and to all of us. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. We know that seven is the complete number of God. Seven means God has completed a thing. Number seven biblically means God has completed a thing. So we know that Jesus rose out of the tomb which is just outside of the walls of Jerusalem in the garden tomb, right? Seven miles, the risen Lord had walked that morning on that same day to meet up with these two men. Now, I want you to understand that Jesus is intentional. He is intentional. God is intentional to say, Lord, be intentional with me. Be intentional with me. Be intentional with me. Come on, Lord, be intentional with me. I want to be, in, I want to be intentional like Jesus. So they walked along and they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with him. So these two men are talking about Jesus. If two or more, right, meet and my name, they're talking about Jesus. So when you start talking about Jesus, he shows up. He comes on the scene. Did you hear what I said? When you start talking about Jesus, Jesus shows up and he comes on the scene. But God kept them from recognizing him. The last time they had seen him, he was beaten horribly, all, really almost too unrecognizable. He was dead on a cross. He was being put in a tomb. See, they had forgotten his words that he was going to rise again on the third day. Because they were wrapped up in the horrible thing that happened. So we can't get wrapped up on a horrible thing that happened. We cannot stay there. We cannot stay in the gloom and doom. We cannot stay wrapped up in the bad stuff. We cannot. We must remember what God has told us. We must remember that the best is yet to come. We must remember the glorious promises of God. We must remember the good that is coming. We will not recognize Jesus, right? If we're wallowing in the darkness. And then Jesus asked them, you would think they would recognize his voice. What are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short. Sadness written across their faces. They were stuck in their grief. They were stuck in their sadness. They have forgotten that Jesus told them he was going to be rising from the dead three days later. They forgot the word that God had given them. They forgot the hope that God had given them. They were in their sadness. And they didn't recognize Jesus when he came on the scene. Don't be like that, right? Get out of your funk. Get out of your stinking thinking. Get out of your sadness. Take your eyes off the death and into the light and into the life. You want to recognize Jesus' voice. You want to recognize him when he comes on the scene. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about the things that have happened there the last few days. Listen, how much bad news are you listening to? 
are you listening to all the bad news and all the gloom and doom that's going around social media? Are, or are you in expectation of Jesus coming on the scene? Are you in expectation of the good and the glory? Are you in expectation of an encounter with Jesus Christ who is alive? Who's walking and talking with you right now? Jesus says, what things? The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did power for miracles. He was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. They forgot that he said he was going to rise from the dead. We got to keep our eyes and ears, our mind, our soul and spirit on the promises of God. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and they crucify him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Now, they're, they're focused on what men had done. They're focused on the reports of man. They were focused on what the Pharisees had done and what the government had done. They were focused on the power of the government of man instead of the power of the government of God. We got to switch our focus, right? We got to get our eyes off the government of man and get our eyes on the power of the government of God. We had hoped he was the Messiah that come to rescue Israel. All happened three days ago. Then some of the women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning and they came back with an amazing report. Now listen to me. I believe the amazing report. They're walking, they're talking. They're trying to ponder this report. This bread is still rising. It takes three hours to rise. You see, God is baking the bread right now. He's baking the bread, my friends. He's baking the bread. And Jesus is coming on the scene. They said his body was missing. And they had seen angels who told them Jesus is alive. Some of our man, men ran out, ran out to see, and sure enough, his body was gone, just as the woman had said. But they were still trying to wrap their heads around it. They were still trying to, they were talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. So do you get to the point where you're going, I'm tired of talking about this negative thing. I'm tired of trying to make sense of it. I'm tired of trying to reason about it. I'm tired of, uh, I mean, I'm, you know, you ever said like, you know, you can sit there and talk something to death <laughs> you know, until you're exhausted, until you're practically a puddle on the floor. You know, you're trying to reason it and reason it and reason it and reason it in your carnal mind. You're trying to reason it with, with the earthly ways. And you forget what God has said, because you're so wrapped on trying to make logical reasoning of it. Stop with the logic. Stop talking that thing to death. Stop trying to reason it with an, an earthly knowledge. And remember, we serve a supernatural God. And remember what he's told you. And then Jesus got frustrated with him. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures? Wasn't it clearly predicted that Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from the scriptures of the things concerning himself. So that must have been a long walk. Three hours, right? The rising of the bread, the baking of the bread, the kneading of the bread. Jesus was reminding them. We must be reminded of the promises of God. We must remind, be reminded of the glory of God. We must be reminded Jesus is alive and living. Here in the earth 
with us and through us. All of God's promises are yes and amen. So we got to get our mind off the stinking thinking. We got to stop rehashing all the bad stuff that happened. Keep trying to, oh, I got to wrap my mind around this. Whoa. Jesus is saying, stop it. And he's saying, listen to me. Be reminded of the word of God. Be reminded of the promises of God. Be reminded. Of what God has told you. By this time, they were at, nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on. Like he was waiting to see after all the time he had spent with them that they would be hungry for more. Did you hear what I said? Are you hungry for more? Are you hungry for more Jesus? Are you hungry for more time with him? Or do you always have to have this set schedule? Oh, dee, 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 dee. My daughter was like, oh, let's just go to a taco bowl. Let's just go in and out. And I was like, no. I set the day aside for just you and me, daughter. Let's go sit down. Right? Let's go break bread together. I'm hungry for more time with you. I'm hungry for more time with you, Jesus. But they begged him, stay the night with us since it's getting late. So he went home with them. I knock on the door. Jesus says, if you let me in, I will come in and what sup with you. We got to get out of our rush lives. We got to get out of our stinking thinking. We got to get it out of our schedules. You see, Jesus says Shabbat was made for man. Rest was made for man. God doesn't need to rest. Rest was made for man. man and he is the Lord of rest. He is the Lord of Shabbat. He is the Lord of what? Everything. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the Lord over all time. So if you say, you know what? I'm going to take two hours, three hours out of my day and just sup with the Lord, speak with the Lord, spend time with that loved one, invite King Jesus to be there. He'll make up for the time later. Now listen to this. Here's the word that the Lord gave me that really jumped out to me again. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. And then he broke it and gave it to them. Here we go. Suddenly, 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 their eyes were open and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. Jesus is recognized at the breaking of the bread. This is the word he gave me, my friends. Jesus is recognized at the breaking of the bread. When we break bread with each other, when we take the time to break bread with each other in the name of Jesus, Jesus is recognized. Suddenly. I wasn't going to take my daughter through the Taco Bell drive through No way. I had set that time aside that day to spend time with her. I had invited King Jesus. We went to a place that's known for its bread. Baker's crust. Father, God is the baker. Jesus is the bread. We are the partakers of the bread. The bread of life. And Jesus is recognized at your table with everyone there at the breaking of the bread. Are you breaking bread with your loved ones? Are you setting that time aside to invite King Jesus to your table and not being rushed? Get out of the fast food. Get out of the drive through Come on. And go and sit down and break bread. As soon as me and my daughter broke bread Saturday, 
she opened up to me. She started sharing her heart. I invited King Jesus to come and be at that table. And I realized, and, and he said, Emmaus to me afterwards. And I said, they recognized you, King Jesus, when you broke the bread. This is why even showing the word me the word baker over and over again. Father, God is the bread baker. You are the bread. When we break bread and sup with you, you, King Jesus, are recognized in the middle of it. No matter whether you're sitting with a prodigal, no matter whether you're si sitting with people who are hostile towards Jesus. We invite you, King Jesus, to this table. Break bread with us. Be in our midst. King Jesus, I ask you to be recognized at the breaking of the bread with my loved one. King Jesus, I ask you to be recognized at my table or at a restaurant at the breaking of the bread. Suddenly, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. Because what? He was recognized. A shift happened. A breakthrough happened. The breaking of the bread. Then they realized. Their faith was realized. You know, I love the book of Hebrews because it's a book of faith. And you know, Sarah and Abraham, God promised them they were going to have a child in their old age. And Sarah laughed at it. She was like, oh, yeah, right, you know. And it says in the book of Hebrews, then Sarah realized, suddenly she realized. She came to a realization. Her faith came into alignment with what God had told her. She came into remembrance. Then Sarah realized and then conceived Isaac in her womb. You see, how can we come to the realization of our faith? If we don't sit down with Jesus, if we don't sit down and remember what God has promised us. Suddenly, suddenly, suddenly their eyes were open and they recognized him. Now, I want you to type this in the chat right now. Suddenly, the eyes of my loved one, whoever it is you've been praying for, listen to me. That prodigal, that husband, that friend, that neighbor that you've been praying for, that you've been praying that their eyes would be open to the truth, to Jesus. I want you to take this word right now. It's the 24th of April. This is Luke 24, Luke 24, 31. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the three and one, the one and three. Suddenly, my loved one's eyes were open and they recognized Jesus. Come on. Suddenly, my daughter's eyes were open. Come on, we're, we're going to speak by faith. This is a moment of realization, a moment of conception, a moment of understanding, a moment of awakening. Come on. Lord Jesus, break the bread in front of them. Come on, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We invite you, Lord. Come on, just proclaim this by faith. Suddenly, my daughter, my son, my husband, eyes were open and they recognized Jesus. And when they recognized Jesus, they rec recognized all truth. When they recognized Jesus, they recognized truth. When they recognized Jesus, because he is all truth. Suddenly, their eyes were open and they recognized Jesus. And we say, Lord, give us an opportunity to break bread with our loved ones. We invite you, King Jesus, into that moment. Spiritually, 
And they said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? A lot of times we have to really spend more time in the word and invite King Jesus to walk with us and give us understanding of the scriptures. Inviting the Holy Spirit to walk with us and give us understanding of the scriptures. Being reminded what God has told us. Being reminded of the goodness of God. They were, they were eating. They were feasting on the word. Luke 24, 33. And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 disciples and others who had gathered with them. This is a complete divine turnaround. When Jesus comes on the scene and he comes into your midst and bread is broken in his name, you invite him to your table, you break bread with him, and that loved one is at the table that doesn't even recognize Jesus, there will be a moment, a sudden moment of them recognizing Jesus, of them open up and an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and a divine turnaround will happen in them. Did you hear what I said? I speak this word over you and your loved ones today. That even today, Jesus comes on the scene with them. And suddenly their eyes are open and they recognize Jesus they have an immediate, within that hour, divine turnaround and want to go forth and tell everybody about Jesus Christ and his glory. There they found the 11 disciples and others who had gathered with them, who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Then the two from Emmaus who told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them. As they were walking along the road and how he had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. Can Jesus be in two places at once? Yes. Can he appear to every single prodigal in the world all at once, even tonight? Yes. Can he be at many of our tables at once? Yes. Why? Because he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the M from the beginning. He is, is in charge of all time and space. He just needs to be invited into our timeline. He just needs to be invited into our moments. Just say this with me. King Jesus, I invite you right now to step into this moment of time with me and my loved ones. And break bread with us. And the spiritual and in the natural. Redeem us out of our lies. Redeem us out of our darkness. And suddenly our eyes are open. Redeem us out of our spiritual blindness. And suddenly our eyes are open. Suddenly you redeemed my loved one out of their spiritual blindness. And suddenly their eyes are open and they know you, Jesus. Suddenly. That you, King Jesus, would do this tonight, even tonight, to every single prodigal, every loved one that's away from you, every loved one that does not know you, Jesus, every loved one that does not know your truth, King Jesus, that even tonight, you'll step in this moment of time with them, even tonight, King Jesus, step on the scene with them, and suddenly, their eyes are open, out of their spiritual blindness, they see you, King Jesus. They recognize you. They recognize the truth. And immediately, within the hour, they go forward and walk in the truth excitedly and tell and share the good news about who you are, Lord. They had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. Father God, you are the baker. Jesus is the bread. We invite you, King Jesus, to come and break bread bread with us. Give us opportunities, Lord, to break bread with everyone in your name. Give me a bigger table at my house, Lord. Come on. 
And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing among them. Peace be with you. So when you're sharing your praise reports about Jesus, he steps on the scene. When you're talking about him, right? When you're running towards him, when you're breaking bread with him, Jesus comes on the scene. And suddenly standing there among them, peace be with you. The whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened, he said. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? You cannot be afraid of an encounter, a supernatural encounter with Jesus. You cannot be afraid of a supernatural encounter with Jesus. Ask him for one right now. King Jesus, I invite you to a supernatural encounter with you. That I see you with my eyes. I see you with my mind, body, soul, and spirit. A supernatural, a supernatural encounter with you. I'm not afraid. I invite you, King Jesus, to a supernatural encounter with my daughter. Where she sees you with her eyes. With all of every cell of her being. Her mind, body, soul, and spirit. See you, King Jesus. Her ears hear you. See you. A supernatural encounter with you. King Jesus, we invite you to step onto the scene right now with our children for supernatural encounters. Can't be afraid of that. Ask for it. Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I'm not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I do. That your child will be able to reach out and touch him. Come on. Even now, Jesus still appears to people in the earth. He's alive. He's everywhere. Come on. Jesus has appeared to me in dreams. Ask for a dream. Come on. Oh, this is what I love. They stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. Say, I am filled with joy and wonder because they have supernatural encounters with you, Lord. My children are filled with joy and wonder because they have supernatural encounters with you, Lord. Then he asked them, do you have anything to eat here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. Now, other translations say they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. Jesus did say that he would have the sweet for the bitter. Now, the broiled fish, what does the broiled fish represent? The meat. It's time for us to mature in Christ, to get into the meat, right? It's time for us to be mature in Christ Jesus, to come into the deeper things of Christ, sink into the deeper things of Jesus, the supernatural side of things, going deeper into the word. It also says that he got a honeycomb. Many translations that he's, right? He had the sweet for the bitter. We have the sweet for the bitter. And he ate it as they watched. And he said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. If you don't understand the scriptures, say this right here. King Jesus, I proclaim that you are opening my mind to understand the scriptures. You are opening my mind to understand the scriptures. I have the mind of Christ. And he said, yes, it was written long ago that Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. That there is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You know, if you don't know how to share the gospel with people, just say this. There's forgiveness of sins for all who repent. And I'm forgiven. And I love that Jesus says here, beginning in Jerusalem. We're in this timing, my friends, where the Jews will recognize Jesus. Because we're going to be breaking bread with the Jewish people. Christians who carry Jesus Christ within us, right? We're going to be breaking bread with the Jewish people. And they will recognize Messiah. You are witnesses of all these things. 
And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Then Jesus led them to Bethany and lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. Now, other translations say that he blessed them and then he breathed the Holy Spirit on them. Right? So they had the breath of the Holy Spirit. While they stayed in their room and prayed, they had recognized Jesus and they, they went into a time of prayer and expectation of the glory. So they worshiped him and they returned to Jerusalem filled with great joy. No. And they spent their time at the temple praising God. So we got to get out of our stinking thinking. We got to break bread with Jesus. We've got to break bread with our loved ones. And we got to proclaim this Luke 24 scriptures over our lives, over our loved ones. We got to come into a time of rejoicing and praising and, and expectation. And this is the time that we're in right now. 